Dear President McNutt, dear Under Secretary of State Allen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, it is a great honor for me, seriously, to participate in today's significant conference. And I will start from that point. As you entered the reception hall, you could see the exhibitions which, better than any words, demonstrated the current state of Ukrainian science and education. You saw burned and half-burned books there. These are the last copies from the Kharkiv printing house. The other 50,000 copies were destroyed by a Russian missile. Seven printing workers lost their lives next to them. Ukrainians bought the books found in the ashes to support the families of victims. And we have brought some of them here because they illustrate better than any story how aggressor country treats Ukrainian culture. You will also see the exhibition postcards from Ukraine. Unfortunately, these are not, not the postcards sent from vacation. Each one shows photos of Ukrainian museums, memorials, uh, libraries before and after the destruction by Russia. Meanwhile, the exhibition Science in Danger will tell the stories of Ukrainian scientists and scholars who have lost decades of hard-earned research because the Russian army destroyed their laboratories and universities, and in some cases took their lives. Hundreds of Ukrainian students and the future scientists have never, see, have never received their diplomas because they have been killed. We have also brought these diplomas for the exhibition. Dear friends, in this war of annihilation and devastation led by Russia, the loss extends beyond human lives, though the most important thing is human life. The war also entails the setback of development in societal prospects. Each attack on schools, universities, and libraries not only causes destruction, but also sets back progress for years. During the first uh, year of the invasion, we seriously considered whether to start the school year because it was too dangerous for children. Hundreds of schools had already been destroyed by the occupiers. However, we realized that we had, no, we had to do everything we could to ensure that children received their education. This is necessary not only for their future, but also for our sustainable present. As a result, two-thirds of Ukrainian st students have been studying remotely all these years. There are some of them uh, youngest children who have never seen their classmates and teachers in person because they have never sat at a desk. That is why we are actively building bomb shelters in the schools so the children can study offline. Of course, the quality of uh, such education is much better than online. And we have even launched the first underground school. Although this is nonsense in the 21st century. However, this is our reality. And we are grateful for every country, organization, and person who helps us to preserve development for children, including the United States Agency for International uh, uh, Development, uh, which helped, as we said, uh, print more than three million textbooks for Ukrainian students ahead of this school year. For ourselves, we have long decided that we cannot afford the luxury of waiting for victory to rebuild. So truly win, to truly win, uh, first and foremost in a civilization sense, we need to rebuild life now, faster than they destroy it. We want not only to preserve territory, but also to safeguard civilization, development, science, and culture within it. That is why the educational partnership between our countries is so important. And we are excited about the opportunity to build stronger bridges 
between Ukrainian schools, universities, and research laboratories and their partners in the United States. Unlike dictatorship, the free world is based on common humanistic values and multiplication of knowledge. That is why we cannot allow disinformation, distortion of history, and destruction of Ukrainian culture and science to prevail. This would mean the defeat of the free world. That's why when people ask me, ask me what else they can do to help Ukraine besides the very much needed air defense systems, my answer is by spreading our culture and knowledge about us, about our science, our history, about the fact that we are not the part of Russia, as it claims. Instead, Russia has appropriated hundreds of Ukrainian cultural contributions for itself. Therefore, our current defense extends to the cultural front as well, against the colonizer and for the restoration of historical justice. That is why I'm so grateful when Ukrainian studies find a place in universities, libraries, and museums around the world. Uh, this knowledge is not just about knowing Ukrainian scholars or cultural figures. It is about understanding Ukraine, which means understanding the causes of Russian chauvinism and to understand the consequences of this chauvinism. Artists and writers were shot and names were appropriated. This has already happened in our history, and it should not happen again. As the First Lady of Ukraine, I'm trying to do my part by supporting, among other things, the Ukrainian Bookshelves um, initiative within we have already donated 47,000 uh, books about Ukraine to 40 university libraries around the world. During my last visit to the, uh, Washington, D.C., we donated 250 books to the Georgetown University Library, and we hope that uh, one day a Ukrainian studies department uh, will be launched there as well. We also launched... <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we also launched more than 80 Ukrainian language audio guides in the monuments and museums in 44 countries. Uh, here again, my gratitude goes to the Ukrainian museums in New York and Chicago, uh, the Ukrainian Institute in, the, in New York, uh, and the Ukrainian House in Washington, D.C. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Uh, I'm grateful for their outstanding efforts to promote uh, Ukrainian culture in the United States. And 50 years ago, Harvard, University, uh, Harvard University's Ukrainian Research Institute became the first and for a long time, and as we know, ac uh, academic center in the United States to study history and culture of Ukraine. And um, for many years, it was the only one, but later, Many American universities followed this tradition, opening Ukrainian courses and scholarships in Ukrainian studies. Thank you. I only wish that um, I only wish to see uh, Crimean Tatars studies among them, in honor of the people of Crimea who were enslaved by Russia and are currently facing repression there. The United States has become a unique hub of diversity and growth for various peoples and cultures. So I'm sure that this will be a matter of principle here. The best way to oppose occupators and, and uh, occupations and annexations is to empower and support those affected by them through advocacy and development initiatives. Dear friends, Ukraine is grateful to everyone, scientists, uh, universities, public figures, libraries, museums, governmental and non-governmental organizations who help educate Ukraine and raise awareness about Ukraine uh, around the world. We are thankful to everyone who created Ukrainian study, uh, studios, uh, translated books, 
uh, organized exhibitions and sheltered our artists and scientists. Why is it worth uh, pursuing Ukrainian studies here on the other side of the world? It is um, to understand better not only the diversity of the world, but also one's own culture. After all, Ukraine has made a great contribution here in the United States. For example, a century ago, the eminent Ukrainian aircraft designer Igor Sikorsky found refuge here from Bolsheviks, and he built dozens of helicopters and airplanes that set world records and uh, were the first to cross the Atlantic. The greatness of the universe and the human mind was revealed to millions of readers by the son of Ukrainian Im immigrants, astronomer Karl Sagan. Lyubomir Romankiv made the creation of hard disk drivers a true revolution in recording information possible. He was born in 1931 in Jovkva, near Lviv, Ukraine, worked and lived in the United States. A Nobel Prize winning economist Simon Kuznets, the author of GDP concept, concept received um, his education in Kharkiv. Today, this university city is under daily bombardment. Russia is devastating lecture halls and jeopardizing the future of, of aspiring scientific minds. You see how science and culture bring us closer together. You, they have already brought us closer. And I believe that they will indeed save the modern world. The spread of knowledge is victory over aggression, over destruction, over chaos. And I thank you for standing with us on the side of light. Thank you.